Good morning, streaming family. Can we greet our family in the name of Jesus? Come on in the house, everybody. Put your, put your six hands together. <laughs> However many, well, I don't want to get into math. Good morning. Welcome, streaming family. It is a delight to welcome you here into the house of the Lord today. And my prayer is that the precious Holy Spirit would begin to touch you right now where you are listening and where you're sitting in your home right now. Uh, There's a tremendous anointing in the room today, and I've been just a little bit befuddled by it. Uh, I spent last night putting a message together, which the Lord later pointed out wasn't fitting because it's for next week. So I thought, well, how lovely of you, and uh, so good. So we've got next week covered. But in the meantime, he's given me a little bit of a hodgepodge of just a few points. And most, most of all, I just pray that you would be sensitive to the presence of the Lord where you are right now. Oh, beloved, we need a touch from the Holy Spirit is what we need. We don't need good sermons. We need a good God to touch us right where we are. And I pray that that you would just be aware of his sweetness right now over the television, that you would just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as you're listening to the sound of my voice, because if he doesn't confirm the word with signs following, then we need to just go home right now and have lunch and and, uh, do something else. So I just pray that his presence would fill this holy and sacred space between where I'm standing and where you are right now in your precious life. And you'll forgive me if I'm a little bit emotional today. I have no reason to be other than his presence is in this place. And, uh, you know, he was whispering to my heart and, and uh, I, uh, my, he was just tenderizing my heart. You know, I'm always looking to hear the message and, and he just sort of dropped a little something into my heart today that I would like to share with you. But I just pray that you would, you would be able to be tender, tenderize your heart right now because we don't need a left brain neck up exercise today. We need, we need to invite the Holy Spirit to come in to touch us at the deepest places of our being. Oh, beloved, I just feel today that he's dislodging things that have to do with our past. Did you know, there's a beautiful verse that I want to read to you from the book of Joshua. And I just want you to listen to it. It's in line with what we spoke about last week, but I just want you to let the words settle into your heart. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from the right or to the left that you may be successful, whatever you do. Keep this book of the law always before your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you whithersoever thou goest. May God bless the reading of his word four times. God says to Joshua, be strong and be courageous. Last week, we studied together a a beautiful crossing point in the history of the Bible. And it was a special river that was designed that when the last person died in the wilderness, remember there were 100 funerals a day for 38 years, but the scripture says when they crossed the brook Zarek, that the last had died 
in the land. And the last death triggered the people of God being released to move forward. Beloved, did you know sometimes it's death that triggers a release of newness? And I want you to focus on this phrase today. Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses was the greatest prophet in the history of the Old Testament. Of 40 years, he learned to be a prince in Egypt and thought he was somebody. For 40 years, he was in the wilderness learning he was a nobody. And then for 40 more years, he learned that God can use a nobody. 120 years. This is the man of God. He was the glue that held the nation together. There was no one that could touch Moses in his anointing, his calling, his gifting. But did you know that even great leaders have to die? And even though Moses is going to die, the work continues. And I want you to see Joshua has spent, he's 80 years old at this time. He has been spending all of his years around Moses. Do you know what? He was just in the room with Moses. Did you know sometimes you don't need to take formal seminars? You just need to be around people. Mentoring someone is living with them. It isn't saying, we're going to look at four snappy principles today on mentoring. No, you just do life together. Joshua has been doing life for 40 years. Remember last week we found out everyone had died except for Moses, Joshua, and Caleb. Those were the only three that survived out of the wilderness, according to God's word. But now Moses is going to die. He's not allowed to go into the promised land because he disobeyed God. Instead of speaking to the rock, he struck it twice. You say, Craig, why would God keep Moses from going into the promised land because he struck a rock twice and he didn't just speak to it? Now, did you notice when he struck the rock twice, the water still came out? You know, your gift and ability will still work and your anointing will still work even when you're in sin. I just don't understand that mystery. Someone is in deep sin and the, gl the glory was on him and the gift is working. It always does. The water still flows. But you know what? That rock that he spoke to was a type of Jesus Christ who would only be smitten once and Moses smote him twice. He screwed up a type and a shadow of the Messiah and God said, that's enough. His anger problems that got him to kill an Egyptian 120 years earlier, were still prevalent. Isn't it good to know you can be still sanctified, but not quite all the way? So in a way, we look at Moses and we see ourselves. But God was not going to allow him to go in the land. But he was 120. It says his physical force was not abated. And that means his, his sexual life was right on target. And his eye was not dimmed. So there was nothing in the natural wrong except God had to draw a line on Moses' ministry. As great as he was, as gifted as he was, as talented as he was, Moses could only lead in circles. Did you know we see different leaders? When we look at Moses and we look at Joshua and we look at Caleb, we see three different types of leaders, and we're going to pursue that a little more next week. But I want you to see that the primary relationship of Israel's life is Moses, the glue that held the nation together, and now God says it's time for you to go. Here's Joshua. He's postured to go into a straight line of conquest. He's been in the circularity leadership with Moses. He's been faithful to Moses. But you see him in a moment now. Moses, my servant, is dead. These are such important words, beloved. We need to leave the past behind I felt the precious Holy Spirit saying, I need to dislodge the remaining elements of the past, emotionally, spiritually, whether it's bitterness, whether it's unforgiveness, whatever it is, the past is to be the past. I had a preacher friend that once told me, Craig, the past is the past as long as it's still in the past. But if it's reaching from the past into your present, it's not the past. Someone say, man, that's worth the whole message right there. God's workers die, but God's work goes on. And Moses is dead, but God is doing something new. There's a whole new beginning, there's a whole new generation, and there's a whole new leadership, but first, we have to let go of the past. We have to let go. Moses is dead. 
Joshua knew Moses was dead, but God had to repeat the obvious. Moses, my servant, is dead. You know, it's okay to miss the past, but we don't want to miss our future because we're living in the past. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. See, I can't go back and I can't stay here. I've got to move forward. But the first thing before we are triggered to step ahead is sometimes we have to let go. Now, I don't know what your Moses is that God is announcing is dead for you. It could be a dream. It could be something you've been holding on to. It could be a misunderstanding. It could be a bitterness. It could be unforgiveness. I, I don't know what your Moses is, but the Lord is announcing this morning, Moses is dead. Yes, he was the glue of the nation. Now he's gone. Now he's gone. And it says they mourned him. De- Deuteronomy 34 says they mourned him for 30 days. That's a Jewish mourning period. It's an appropriate. It's not too much, not too little. It's just right. So the nation had to mourn and go through the grieving process. And you know, we talked a lot about the grieving process in this church. Hmm? Kids teach us how to grieve. Hmm? They're hurt, they scream, and they play. Hmm? They fall down, they break something, they hurt, they scream bloody murder until they're done, and then they go play. That's grieving. Every loss we sustain in our life, whether it's small, medium, middle size, or large, has to be grieved. Every loss we sustain, whether it's your teddy bear being taken when it was taken, whether it's been the loss of a body part, whether it's been a loss of a loved one, whether it's a catastrophic and obvious loss, or whether it's a subtle loss of a friendship or loss of an ability that you don't have anymore. Everything in our lives has to be grieved. And Moses, the more important that thing is, the more it has to be grieved. But you know what? I I remember as a child when my parents took my teddy bear. Now, this may sound really slight to you, but I I remember... I remember thinking, what a stupid thing. My mom read an article in the Inquirer that says, don't let the kid get addicted to his blankie and his teddy. And she read this, and I remember I couldn't find my blankie and I couldn't find my teddy. And I'm looking, and I'm ever, I tore the house apart. And she didn't mention, because she was too embarrassed or ashamed, that, uh, honey, you don't need to tear the whole universe apart because we threw it out. Why did you throw I remember being a kid thinking, you stupid adult. I wasn't done. Cakes are done. People are finished. Uh, I wasn't, I was almost done. I would have given it up myself. But, but, but she prematurely did what she thought. Now, parents do that all the time. God, we forgive you. We love you. And we let you, but you know what? Moses is dead. Whatever it is that you need to let go of, whatever it is, you need to grieve it properly. When somebody dies, you don't just go, oh, great, okay, well, thank God for heaven, and move on. That means you're in denial. That means you're paralyzed. That means you're not in touch. That means you're disassociated if you cannot grieve properly. The people of God wept for 30 days as much as they could. So did Joshua, and he was sitting paralyzed. Can imagine this guy? Moses is everything, everything. And he led them right to the brink of crossing the river where they're going to go from circularity into a straight line of conquest. And Joshua is thinking, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, no, it's my turn to do the TV show. What am I? They're two different men. They're two different leaders. Moses only led in circles. Joshua is called to go in a straight line of conquest. So they had a lot in common. There was a lot of continuity, but there was also discontinuity because Moses couldn't do what Joshua was called to do. And you know what? You're, no one can do what you're called to do. But often Moses has to die. Something has to die to become the trigger to release Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore arise. Notice those words. Joshua, it's time for you to get up. I know you're paralyzed. I know you're not sure about the details. And I haven't told you all the details, but it's time for you to realize and reconcile yourself to the fact that Moses is dead. Whatever that is that you need to let go in the past, 
It could be a hurt, you know. It could be something that you're just, it's not in the past, so it's not past. You know, I, I know a lot of people that, you know, if you've ever talked to uh, anyone that was survived the Holocaust, when you talk to people in a left brain, I had, I had a lunch with a Holocaust survivor. He was 12 years of age, and we're sitting over at the oak tree with and we're, we're eating. And he's like talking matter of fact, you know. So anyway, they used to beat me every other day. Could you pass the salt? Yeah. And so I hadn't eaten in five weeks. Uh, could, you, could you pass that? We were having a conversation about the Holocaust. Now, I know you can't just be emotionally raw all the time, but he was a little bit left brain neck up when he was talking about being 12. And he says, yeah, we hadn't eaten in days, and we came upon some men in France, and they were carrying cheese, and we both ate an entire thing, a block of cheese, each who were 12 years old. They were just starving. He was like 9, 10, 11, and 12 during the Holocaust, during, during World War II. But he was talking very left brain about it. And, and, and I know you can't just be raw all the time, but you do have to be sensitive enough to know when you are grieving a loss right now in your heart. You've got to get in touch. You've got to associate with it and not just have a left brain. Yeah, I was abused when I was six. It was crazy. Anyway, so what movie do you want to see tonight? Hold on. Hold on. Thank God for shots of mental Novocaine, we call it. It's a helpful thing. When a child is being abused, they disassociate and they fly in the roof and they, uh, la, 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 la. okay, that's called shock, all right? And when you're, when you're shot, there's shock kicks in. But if shock stays, you, you die. You can't stay in emotional shock forever. You have to, you have to come out. And you have to face that ungrieved area. And you, and you can't just left brain neck up about it. I have a dear friend that was horribly abused by her father. And she, to this day, cannot... She'll discuss it left brain neck up. But I realize she's never been to therapy. She's never, oh, I don't need therapist. I've got God. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got God. So what, you don't need uh, to clean your pool? What kind of an idiotic thing is that? You have tummy trouble, you go to a tummy doctor. You have foot trouble, you go to a foot doctor. You have emotional, psychological problem, you go to a... Okay. So I don't care how much you know left brain, neck up. The question is God, is, God is about ready to bring new things into our life, and that's usually triggered by a loss. Moses is dead. We've got to release the past. It's time before we go forward in a straight line. We've got to finish up some business on this side of Jordan, on the east side. Before we go over to the West, and I know we all want to go to the promised land. I'm going to the promised land. Not yet. Not yet. Because you don't want to go over unhealed. You're not going to go up the next level and into the new sphere without the healing that Jesus has been pursuing you about. I used to have a pastor that, that uh, had people come into him, and they'd give him their presenting problem in about two minutes, you know. you know. My wife is horrible and she's insensitive and she can't, blah, 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 blah. And he would say, whatever the presenting problem was, he would say, well, if I were God sitting here right now, what would he say to you? And they'd go, why, well, I, I don't know. He goes, no, no, no. If I were God sitting here right now, what do you think I would say to you? And every time they would give the proper counsel. And he'd say, good, let's pray. Father, thank you for this healing. Amen. And he would send them out. Five-minute therapeutic session. They were madder than hornets. Because when most people ask for counsel, they're looking for an accomplice. They don't want to get better. And he just cut it to the chase. What do you think God would say to you right now in your inner healing categories here? Of if there's anything you need to let go. What, what is your Moses that is dying or has died that you need to let go of because you can't move forward until you grieve the loss of Moses. By the way, the Bible says God buried him, Deuteronomy 34, where no one could find him. Do you know why? God's taking whatever it is he's removing from you, and he's going to bury it and hide it where you can't get it. Otherwise, you'd build an altar to it. Well, we're going to build an altar for Papa. It's 30 feet tall by what you you, you you, they would have worshipped at Moses' tomb. You know it. It's human nature. 
He had a bronze serpent called Nehushtan that when the people were bitten by snakes, uh, he held that up, and they, as if they looked to it, they were healed. It, 900 years later, they're burning incense to Nehushtan, a thing of brass. I wrote a book called Nehushtan. I did. You know who did the, the, the forward to it? Dick Mills. Oh, this was a long time ago. But I thought, isn't it something that you, God can take a thing of brass, an instrument used for his glory, and they're, they're worshiping incense 900 years later, worshiping the thing. Not God. Something he did. Beloved, it's time for us to let go of the past. If, if it's Nehushtan, if it's a way we've been worshiping, if it's a person in our lives we don't want to ditch, if it's somebody we're so bounded to in an unhealthy way that we can't let them breathe and we can't let them go, Moses, my servant, is dead. God had to get this really clear in Joshua's head. You see, he said it more than once. But yeah, I get it. He's dead. Yeah, right. So now let's go on. No, 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 no. Moses is dead. The past is the past. Release it. If you could think, it's nobody's business, but it just in your heart of hearts, what is it that the Lord's saying, let go? And you say, no, I'm not going to. But, but you're so weary now. You're so tired. It's just not even possible anymore. It's just like, no, I will not let go. <laughs> Like you're 109. I want to, you know those movies where the witch is like 20 years old and then you see that she's really 900, you know, and she gets old and you go, ooh, ooh. And she was usually trying to seduce everybody and everybody thought she was 20, right? And then you, all of a sudden you see she's 900 or something. You just go, oh, oh, it's not attractive at all when you see that. There was a movie years ago with Ben Cross. I don't know if you remember. It was an old VHS. It was in the 80s. It was called uh, The Entity. And Remember? And Ben Cross was a priest, and there was this beautiful, gorgeous woman throughout the film who's trying to seduce him, and he's a Catholic priest. And, you know, she's really seductive, and she's really beautiful, and he's just really tempted in a lot of spots. But at the end of the movie, you see, it wasn't really her. It was this blobby green demon that wasn't her at all. And if he would have succumbed to that temptation, that blobby green thing would have, I, I just wish beautiful women looked more like blobby green things. That's my, that was my contesting. But I remember that film. I remember I saw it in the early 80s and it marked me. I thought, boy, things aren't what they appear to be sometimes. Something that looks all seductive and young and virile and this, that, and the other, you just, God says, let me show you what you're really dealing with and see if you want it then. Mmm, tasty. God goes, hold on. She's 900 years old and she's a witch. She has three heads. No, thank you. In the name of Jesus, I just refuse that. <laughs> Amen. Man of faith. If the enemy wasn't seductive, we wouldn't hold on to things for so long. But you know, God has to come to us at some point and say, it's dead. It's over. We're not moving one step ahead until you've released that person, place, thing, hurt, pain, anguish, loss, whatever it is. If you need help, get help. Go to a therapist on a Zoom call and say, you know what? I don't know what I need. Isn't it good news to know that you need help? Isn't that lovely? The best thing you can do is not try to stuff the beach balls down, but allow Moses to be dead. So, see, that's what he was putting on my heart today. There's a new beginning coming. There are new things coming. But we have to let go of what is expired. Some anointings have a time limit on them. You've heard me say it before. Um, I believe sometimes uh, God will use whoever he has in a given situation. I call it a laying on of hands. Like let's say all your guys are killed in your company and you're the only soldier left and now you're in charge for a moment. But so there's a laying on of hands sometimes in critical moments where God has to use a certain person. But as soon as the war is over, there's a laying off of hands because that's all God had <laughs> was them. 
and they weren't called to be that for a consistent period of time. And so God will give you an anointing to do something sometimes that you're not really called to do as a vocation. And he'll use you for a moment, then he'll pull that anointing off and say, thank you for services rendered, but (laughs) you're 18 years old and you're not going to be a four-star general. And thank you. God can strike a straight blow with a crooked stick, but then he has to say, I used you, but you're not capable of functioning at that level. I've always said, don't let your, don't let your gift take you where your character can't keep you. My Lord, has, has your gift ever taken you anywhere your character can't keep you? Well, thank God Joshua has been kept in the wings. He's now 80. He's been watching Moses, Osmosis, the brother of Moses. He has been mentored, hands-on. He has a different set of giftings. He has a different anointing. He has a different calling, but he gleaned everything he could from Moses, but now it's time for him to let Moses go. You know, sometimes it's a death that triggers the release forward into newness of life. Four times God had to say, be strong. For yourself, be strong because of the people. Be strong for your Lord. Be strong for the enemy. Four times. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong. Why? Because he's paralyzed in the midst of this loss. You know, the Lord tells him to go up. I just love that. But he didn't give any explanations as to how Joshua is to accomplish these things. I've heard it said God's people live on promises not explanations. He doesn't give him one explanation. He just says, go, and I will be with you. As I was with Moses, who is now dead, I will be with you. And no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Do you ever need a lot of encouragement? You know, I need a lot of encouragement to do anything. God has to talk to me, then he has to woo me, then he has to convince me, and then he has to let me feel his presence, and then he has to whisper something to me, and I'm still shying away from it. He has to give me so much. Thank God Joshua needed that. Be strong of good courage, be strong of good courage, be strong of good courage, be strong of good, 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 good courage. Four times. Why? Because there are people watching you that need your strength. There are demons watching you that need your strength, to see your strength and who you are. God is watching you. Your enemies, your friends, the people, and God, everybody's watching you, Joshua. And it's time to move forward now. But first we have to release the past. It was the end of an era, but it was all they knew. You know, it's hard to turn in a new direction. You've heard me. Uh, quoted a lot, but last week, I have to mention it now again, Deuteronomy 2, verse 3, you've circled this mountain long enough. Now turn north. The mountain represented the 38 years they were in Kadesh Barnea. God condenses a whole bunch of history in one flashback, and he shows them circling the mountain. Circle, circling means maturity, Testing, growing, learning, monotonous, growing, testing, learning. But the Lord spoke to the people in Deuteronomy 2 3, and He said, The monotony of circularity is broken, and I'm going to kill Moses and take him away because he was the leader in the circle. Do you know there's a sense of self protection when you're going in a circle? You're in charge, you're in control. Behold, we are going in another circle. You know, that just never changes. The view never changes. And 38 years, they're going in circularity. And it was really sort of a sense of self-security that the people had. That's all they knew for 38 years was the same scenery. But God says, I'm going to break into your security. I'm going to break into your control. I'm going to break into what's become so common to you. And I'm going to break that circularity. And, and I got to do it by removing the circular leader, Moses. And it says he took him off and buried him. Now, later in the New Testament, there's a scene of where it says the devil is arguing with Michael over the body of Moses. Even Satan wanted to bother that body. 
and defile it. He loves to defile sacred things, but he was blocked from that. But thank God the people were not allowed to know where he was because they would have built an institution, a seminary, a town, a city, and a religion around him. So God said, I got to hide you. I got to hide you. Praise God. No more Nehushtans. If they'll worship incense 900 years later at Nehushtan, what would they have done with the body of Moses? They probably would have propped it up with the Ten Commandments. What has God had to bury from you? Not just take something away, remove a Moses, but take it and bury it where there's no way you can even find it anymore. He's gracious, isn't he? He knows how we are. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, move forward. Loved one, it's an end of an era. What is your Moses? What is it that you're grieving and you won't let go of? Listen to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. Remember Samuel, the great prophet, anointed Saul, the first king of Israel, and he was king for 40 years. And then the Lord said concerning Saul, I'm done with him. I'm done. It's over. And verse 1 says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Do you hear those words? How long will you mourn over blank? Samuel was still grieving the fact that Saul had failed. Samuel was still grieving the fact that he anointed him. Samuel's full of grief. God said, Saul's dead. Move on. Get up, get your horn of oil, and go and anoint. I have somebody new. I have something new. And this is exactly what he's telling Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, you arise. Be strong and be of good courage. 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 I guess he needed that. Because as I was with you, I will be with him, and no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Isn't the Lord gracious? Thank you, Jesus. I read, if you want to be defeated, look back. If you want to be distracted, look around. And if you want to be dynamic, look ahead and up. We have got to look ahead. We have got to look up. We have got to fix our gaze. Remember, we gaze at God. We glance at the giants. We don't gaze at the giants and merely glance at God. I, it's an issue of focus all the time. Everyone I talk to every day, all week long, has a focus problem. If you listen long enough, they're good folk. Remember Peter? He's looking right at Jesus, walking on the water. He looks at the wind and the waves. He, he, he quits gazing at Jesus, and he starts gazing at the wind and the waves, and he sinks immediately. It's, an, it's a shift of focus. It can happen in a second. And we need each other to keep reminding one another about the focus issue. Because as soon as you're focusing on God, if you're gazing at him and you're glancing at everything else, you're driving fine. But once you start gazing in the rearview mirror, and just glancing at the front window, there's trouble. As my daughter is learning how to drive. There are moments, because you're in the passenger seat now, and she's just learning. So I try to talk, and be calm, <laughs> with little, little moments here and there. It's okay. No, it's, we're good. We're fine. That's all right. <laughs> you got to learn a good poker face. Loved one, we, got, we need to get ready to move forward. The Bible says he would give them as much land as they could stand on. But Moses had to die before the door opened to the promised land. Moses is dead. Let's keep it that way. I just want to pray for you. I don't know what your Moses is. This, like I told you, uh, Lincoln said, my politics is short and sweet like the old woman's dance. My theology is short and sweet like the old woman's dance. 
I would encourage you to seek the Lord right now in prayer. What Moses, What is your Moses that you need to let go of? See, we're right on the cusp of a new thing. We're right on the cusp of the promised land. And there's no more room to say, well, I'm going to hold on to this for five more years or maybe I'll die before then. Or No, the Lord says, no, I need you to be of good courage. Don't be frightened. I'm with you. But Moses is dead. You need to let the dead thing be buried. It's time to bury what's dead. I always tell people, make sure when you bury something, it's dead. A lot of people I know bury things alive, and they come back. When you open the coffin, ah, yeah, they're there. Make sure it's dead when you bury it. Or bury it upside down. I can't remember the council, but if it's dead, bury it. If it's dead, bury it. Father, we don't even presume to know our own hearts, Lord as to what is, uh, needs to die and what we need to let go of and the past we need to let recede into the rearview mirror, Lord. We just claim ignorance, but we know, Lord, as David said, Lord, search me and know me. If there be anything in me that is, that is a snag or a hook with regard to the past, uh, that you would, you would bring it to our attention, Lord that we can let Moses go, that we can let the, bar- the legitimate burial happen, that we can grieve and mourn for 30 days, and that we can get up and move ahead in a straight line of conquest. Lord, anything keeping us in circularity, we rebuke in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ right now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I rebuke circularity. I rebuke the, the cords of circularity. I rebuke the uh, ties of circularity, the fish, fish hooks of circularity the the uh, in the security of circularity uh, and in that circularity we're, we've been holding wounds and 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 brokenness and and little little secrets and father we pray you break that cut that circle open with your scissors cut that circular rope open right now Lord and straighten that rope into a straight line of conquest we give you freedom to let us go Lord loose us and let us go in the name of Jesus As Jesus said to Lazarus, loose him and let him go. Take his grave clothes off. Father, we pray that you would remove from us the circularity of our past, God. Thank you. The past is now the past. Let it be the past. And Lord, if we need a special dollop of your anointing or your Holy Spirit, stick in your thumb, pull out a plum and say, what a good Lord am I. We pray that you stick in your thumb, Lord Jesus, and you pull out anything that we need a deliverance from in the name of the Lord. If it's in, get it out. If it's on, get it off. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, arise and go forward. Father, we pray that for each lamb listening right now. Free us so we can move ahead. Free us so we can cross over from the east to the west of Jordan, Lord. Free us so that we can move towards our destiny and our inheritance, Lord. Thank you for all of your faithfulness. Thanks for the manna. Thanks for all of the provision, the central air conditioning, the central heating. But, but the, we, 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 manna is just temporary provision. We want to move straight in a line of conquest where we can eat the corn of the land, Lord. New day, new hour, new ministry, new opportunities in the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. Can you give the Lord some praise right now? Can you give the Lord some praise? Joel, would you walk around and lay hands on the people as I as I conclude in prayer again? I'm going to have Joel lay hands on your shoulders right now, and we'll extend our hands also to you at home. Father, we thank you for a fresh touch. We pray that you would use your servant's hands from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. Give us that beautiful, delicious touch we need, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come in. Just a heap and helping of your help to pull out anything that needs to be pulled out, pull off anything that needs to be pulled off, pull down anything that needs to be pulled out in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise that you would fill your children with the Holy Spirit from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, a double dose of the Holy Ghost from coast to coast, Lord. Fill them up, wall to wall, Holy Spirit. Lord, give us a new infilling. Give us a fresh touch from heaven, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet right now, Lord God. 
Thank you, Moses is dead. Thank you, we let it all go. Thank you, you'll bury it where we can't ever find it ever again so that we're free to get up and move forward. We want to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, beloved, just as, as Joel is praying, would, would you just take your hands and just sort of put both your hands facing down to the ground? Let's have our hands emptied and just facing the ground right now. Father, as we open our hands, our palms right now, and we just sort of, we're, our hands are empty. We just, we, just, we just let go of everything. We can't cling on to one thing. We just face the ground with our palms and we say, Lord, cleanse me. Fill me, Lord God. And, and then let's turn our palms upward. Turn, turn your palms up to Jesus. Lord, here's an empty hand. Fill it, Lord. An empty heart. Fill it, Lord. Jesus, right now, let your Holy Spirit warm our hands and come upon us that you would put now new gifts in our hands, new joy in our hands, new relief and liberty in our hands, God. Let the warmth of your Holy Spirit fill our hands, Lord. And we pray now that our hands would be empowered to pick up new things and new gifts and new opportunities and to reach and open new doors. And, and we give you praise right now, Lord, for emptying us now to fill us with a new thing in Jesus' name. Now put those hands together and give him praise right now. Give him praise. Amen. Isn't he a mighty God? Oh, he loves you so much, honey. He loves you so much. He's crazy about you. He's crazy about you. You know, he takes my breath away. You know, His presence will come in my room and I just, I just, everything goes quiet. He's so beautiful. And you know, I pray that God would increase his presence here in this house, in this little altar. I was in Nigeria years ago, and a gentleman ran up to my car as the window was closing, and he said, you have a small altar, but the light from that small altar will set the world on fire. And the window closed, and I went, ha! Then he turned to the Volkswagen next to him and says, you have a small altar. No, no, we didn't. It was a unique word just for me. It, it, it's a little altar, but it doesn't need to be much more than that. Hmm? Your little gift, your little talent, it's enough. When he brings his fire, when he puts his fire, you know in the tabernacle they had the uh, candelabra there, the holy lampstand, and they just lit each of those little wicks every day. It was just a little linen wick with fire on it and oil. It's just but enough light to see the work of the Lord. So don't demean how small your little wick is that you don't have a great big eye, uh, big altar. It's enough, honey, just that your little wick is lit with the Holy Ghost. One, there's a beautiful religious service I saw where the uh, leader came out of this beautiful church and he had one candle and he, had l he lit about 150,000 candles in like five minutes. Don't underestimate the power of one light that you're holding. Father, we thank you so much that we forgive us for demeaning our talents, our gifts, our place in the body of Christ. We always look at people up front and think there's something, and we're just in the chair listening. Father, I pray that you will not let us demean our sacred candles, our lamps, our lights, that you will use to change the world. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. We bless you. David is not here today with the table of the Lord, but we love you and we encourage you. If we feed you, you go ahead and feed us. It's always a blessing uh, for, for you to support us emotionally, spiritually, financially. I've got some bills to pay this week, and it's really lovely to be able to have money in the church account to pay those bills. So those checks just keep going out. <laughs> so we would encourage you, only if we feed you and are a blessing to you. If not, don't. Do you know what the Apostle Paul said about giving? Never give compelled or impelled, but freely chosen. If you feel impelled with false shame and guilt, don't give a dime because you'll resent it. If you feel compelled and manipulated and controlled from the outside, don't ever give because you will hate it. But if you freely choose that's a whole different thing. It, 
the way you spend your time when it's freely chosen. You don't ever be resent. You're not resentful because you freely chose it. But when you're compelled or impelled, don't you ever give to a ministry. I don't care who they are. I don't care what the shtick is. I don't care if they're manipulating, controlling, working, whatever it is. You have to ask yourself, I do this every day. Am I compelled to do this, impelled to do this, or am I freely choosing to do this? Because when I don't freely choose to do something, I resent it. You will always resent what you give out of being compelled or impelled. So that's worth the whole offering right there in one big signet ring. It's true. That'll change your life. Whenever you're going to have lunch, whenever you're going to have dinner, whenever you've got to take a phone call, whenever you've got to do something, am I compelled, impelled, or am I freely choosing this? You will find delight when you freely choose something. And otherwise you say, no, I'm sorry, I can't at this time. Because, you know, when you're available all the time, you're not worth much when you're available. So we need you to only freely choose to be with us and take our call and invite us to dinner and never compelled or impelled. Okay, you get that? All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift his countenance unto you and give you peace. Precious Holy Spirit, confirm these words with signs following, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We hope today's message has been a blessing to you. And if it has, please visit our website at drcraigjohnson.org. There you can find additional messages of encouragement. And if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider us in your ministry giving, as we depend solely on the financial assistance of our listeners like yourself. Also, please feel free to send any personal prayer requests. You can find us online at drcraigjohnson.org. God bless you.